Hi, Mr. Richards here, and today's lesson is on rational numbers, and our first step today is to define rational numbers. Basically, a rational number is any number that can be written in the form A over B, where A and B are integers, and B is not equal to zero. So it's kind of a fancy definition for saying a rational number is something that can be written as a fraction with b not being equal to 0 because we can't divide by 0. Now, write each rational number as a fraction. If we have negative 4 and 3 eighths, it's the process of turning 4 and 3 eighths into an improper fraction. So it's 4 times the 8 is 32 plus 3 is 35 over 8. Now, a common mistake here is to either forget the negative or to try to use the negative in the process of getting the 35. What I suggest is just do 4 times 8 is 32, plus the 3 is 35, and then put in the negative at the end, negative 35 eighths. Now, 10, to write as a fraction, is quite simple. It's 10 over 1. Any integer, we can just write as over 1. So 10 is 10 over 1. Next, we have write each decimal as a fraction or mixed number in simplest form. So let's take our 26 hundredths and put it in our nice little chart here. We have 0 and the decimal point 2, 6. So this number is 26 hundredths. Well, we can use that then to write the fraction. It's 26 hundredths. Now to get this into simplest form, we can divide out common factors, and the common factor here we can divide out is 2 and when we do that we get an answer of 13 over 50. So looking at the place value can really help us. 26 hundredths turns into 26 over 100 Simplify to get 13 fiftieths. Then we have the shipping weight of a package is 2.875 pounds. What I really like us to work on as we fill out this chart is not to say 2.875 anymore. To see this as the place value. 2 and, for the decimal point, 875 thousandths. Again, the last place here is in the thousands, and we'll just read it 875 thousandths. So we have 2 and 875 thousandths. Now, if we start by dividing out, say, a 25 from the top and bottom of our fraction. 875 divided by 25, we'll keep the 2, is 35, and 1,000 divided by 25 is 40. Now we're not quite done yet, because we can actually divide another 5 out of here, out of the top and bottom, and that gets us 2 and 7 eighths. And that is our simplified mixed number. So again, to go from a decimal to a fraction, look at the place value and write your fraction and simplify. Now what if the decimal that we want to write as a fraction or mixed number in simplest form is a repeating decimal that does not terminate? Well, in order to write this as a over b, somehow we're going to have to cancel out the repeating decimal. Now remember, 0.4 with the bar over it is really 0.4444 repeating forever. 
we can't write that as a fraction as is. And a common mistake here that some students make right away is to say, oh, 0 0.4 repeating, that's 4 tenths, and that's just 2 fifths. Hey, look, I'm done. No, you're not. That's not right. It's not 4 tenths or 2 fifths. There's a process that we have to go through. Now, what if we set this repeating decimal equal to n? Zero, n equals 0 0.4444 repeating. Now, what if we multiply each side by 10 because one digit is repeating? Now, the reason we're multiplying by 10 is because one digit's repeating. The next example will show you how you solve it when two digits are repeating. Now, why do we multiply it by 10? Well, we end up with 10n equals... Now, when I multiply a number by 10, such as 4.4, when I multiply 4.4 by 10, this is equal to 44. We just move the decimal one spot to the right. Well, that's what we do here. We're going to move this decimal one spot to the right. So this becomes 4.4444 repeating. Now, how does that help us, and where are we going with this? Well, if we take this original n equals statement and subtract it from both sides of the equation, so we'll subtract n from the left and the 0 0.4444 for repeating from the right. Now this n, remember, is just 1n. Something cool kind of happens. We get some cancellation. These all cancel out. And what we're left with, 10n minus 1n is 9n equals 4. Well, now we have a one-step equation. We can divide by 9 on both sides, and n is going to equal 4 ninths. And that's our solution, 4 ninths. Next, we look at what happens when we have a repeating decimal, but two digits are repeating. Well, when we had one repeating digit, we multiplied by 10. Now when we have two repeating digits, we're going to multiply by 100. And if you ever get the challenge of three repeating digits, you're going to multiply by 1,000. But we have two repeating digits here, and so we're going to use the same equation, but this time multiply by 100. Now with this negative 5.39 repeating, I would save the negative 5 till the end. I know some methods include the negative 5. Let's just set our n, though, equal to the 0 0.3939 repeating. We'll save again the negative 5 till the end. Now we have two repeating digits. We're going to multiply both sides of this equation by 100. So 100 times n is going to equal 100 times our 0 0.3939 repeating. Well, we're going to end up with 100n equals, now, when we multiply by 100, our decimal point is going to move twice to the right. So we get 39.3939 dot dot dot. Next, we can bring in our original n equals and subtract that from both sides. 
Now this n again is 1n, so minus 1n, and then minus the 0 0.3939. Now notice, we're going to have cancellation here, where these repeating decimals cancel, and you do want them to line up and make sure they line up so that they do cancel. And what we're left with, 100 minus 1 is 99n equals 39. Now we have a one-step equation that we're going to solve, so if we divide by 9 on both sides, excuse me, 99 on both sides, this will cancel out, and we're left with n equals 39 over 99. Well, now we have to ask ourselves, can that be simplified? And the answer to that is yes. We can take our 39 over 99 and divide both the top and the bottom by 3. That's going to result 13 over 33. And that is our simplified fraction, 13 over 33. But we don't want to forget about our negative 5, so our final answer for this question is negative 5 and 13 30 thirds. So when you have one repeating digit like we did in example 3a, you're going to multiply by 10 and line things up and subtract and simplify when necessary. When you have two repeating digits, you're going to multiply by 100 since that's going to move our decimal place over twice. If you have three repeating digits, you're going to multiply by 1000 because that will move our decimal place over three times. Our key concept is rational numbers and a rational number is any number that can be expressed as the quotient a over b, where a and b are integers and b is not equal to zero. Same definition that we did in the first part of our lesson. But here we do have a very nice and helpful table to show us that we have our natural numbers, our whole number includes zero, our integers include the negative numbers, and then for the other rational numbers we can have 2.3 repeating as we've just discovered how to do our repeating decimals as fractions, 1 18th, 1 and 7 eighths, and 6 tenths. But that leads us to, well, if we have this group called rational numbers, we must have a group called irrational numbers. So what's an irrational numbers? Well, this is a number that is a decimal that neither repeats nor terminates. In other words, it's a decimal that we cannot write as a fraction. So identify all sets to which each number belongs. 7 and 1 eighth. Well, we can use our handy dandy chart here to help us. It looks a lot like the 1 and 7 eighth. It's not an integer, it's not a whole number, it's not a natural number, so we're just going to write for this one rational. What about 1.4142135622 dot 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 dot? Well, it's not a natural number, it's not a whole number, it's not an integer, and it's not a rational number because it's our definition of irrational, a decimal that neither repeats nor terminates. So for B, we're going to write irrational. And lastly, we have 15. Well, I can write it as a fraction, so it's rational is 15 over 1. 15 is an integer, it's a whole number, and it's a natural number. So we're going to write all four. It's natural, whole, integer, and rational. So that's our key with this example, is that we have to identify all sets, not just one set, but all sets. And that is it for this lesson on rational numbers. Good luck.